No one's had battle cruisers in the Star Trek universe? No, 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 no. Surely, surely not. Well, prepare yourself. Because today, we're going to be telling you all about a battle cruiser in the Star Trek universe. And no, this is not a Defiant Class love letter, even though I am narrating this. We are talking today about the one and only Avenger Class, a ship designed by Starfleet to be a warhorse rather than a ship of peaceful exploration. See, the Defiant isn't the only one, but let's not dwell on that before I start getting depressed. Welcome to Trek Central, lords, ladies, and sovereigns. I am your host, Lieutenant Adam, and let's get straight into it. We'll be talking about the USS Avenger today, and specifically the Avenger class itself. Now, these ships only exist in the video game Star Trek Online, and I want you all to listen to me very carefully when I say, I am aware that is not considered main Star Trek canon. The lore, the details we're about to talk about don't apply to the main canon either and should be considered extended canon for the sake of continuity. Now, will all of the gatekeepers please kindly make your way to the nearest airlock? I'll be with you in a moment. Before we warp into this video, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. Okay, engage. Officially commissioned in 2408, but not launched until 2409, the Avenger class was Starfleet's response to rising tensions with the Klingon Empire, as well as other threats that threatened the safety and security of the United Federation of Planets. This time, the organization was determined to be ready, and thus the Avenger class starship was designed. Coming in at just over 425 meters with a crew complement of 430, people, not meters. Starfleet did not mess around when it was designing this dedicated battlecruiser. It was going to be huge, and rightfully so. The Starfleet Inquiry class cruiser could provide a much needed foundation for the new battlecruiser, though. The ship's tough hull and no-nonsense approach to tactical abilities and taking hits was the perfect solution to serve as a template for the next phase of Starfleet's development. The Avenger class was noted as being overpowered for its size. As such, it needed reinforced nacelle struts to protect the main EPS conduits and provide enough circuit length to account for proper degradation ratios between main systems. And if that's too much Trekno-Bubble this early in the video for you, I will translate thusly. Big ship's got big wheels, needs big suspension. It's almost like a space-born monster truck. Warp core wise, the class would make use of a rapid pulse matter antimatter warp core that utilized a higher density plasma output than your traditional Starfleet warp cores. However, this came at a risk. Due to the speed of the damn thing, it would make the warp core more volatile overall. Because of this, one could very fairly claim that the Adventure class is pretty much a flying bomb. That's a scary image for you. The weapons of the Avenger class featured multiple Mark 12 phaser arrays, while also complemented with heavy phaser cannons. Now, these types of phaser cannons were, of course, previously seen on the USS Defiant decades earlier, and I promise I will not compare this thing to Defiant every chance I get. I will probably also break that promise, but moving on. An aft phaser turret was also installed on the Avenger class to make sure that the ship could be firing at all angles at any time. Torpedo-wise, it carried your typical Starfleet torpedo complement, quantum torpedoes, photon torpedoes, but it had a hidden trick up its sleeve. The Starship could deploy a ship-killer warhead, known as the Variable Auto-Targeting Armament, abbreviated as the VATA, or as I will forever know it, the VATA. The torpedo employed miniature targeting sensors and ECCM arrays to increase the warhead's survivability en route to its target. Think of a quantum torpedo on a huge scale that can dodge things. Now you're on the right track. The mounting for the VATA was located right below the Starship's main deflector dish. It would seem that Starfleet chose to keep the main deflector in the traditional placement, as opposed to somewhere more silly and pointless, like, I don't know, built into the massive detachable warhead? Oh, balls, I broke my promise, sorry. While it's still exposed, it does appear that the main deflector array is more reinforced now. While focused on outputting damage, the Avenger class can withstand a fair few hits as well, due to the impressive defensive systems on board, making use of the ubiquitous ablative armor which can deploy during combat around the critical starship systems. 
The Avenger also makes use of auxiliary shielding and structural integrity fields, because without them, you know, everybody would be blamange. Also known as custard to you uncultured few out there that have no idea what blamange is. Using these auxiliary defense systems allows the Avenger class to take more hits than some might expect of it, essentially taking quite a beating before becoming combat ineffective. Combined with the impressive speed and maneuverability of the battlecruiser, that makes it even more amazing. In terms of additional systems, the actual USS Avenger itself is noted as having a cloaking device installed. While Starfleet's use of stealth technology still remains somewhat of a controversial subject, the ship is allowed to use it, thanks to the fall of the Romulan Star Empire, the sudden collapse of which basically did away with the Treaty of Algeron essentially legalizing the use of cloaking devices on Federation starships by accident, as determined by the Starfleet Admiralty anyway. The closing of the 24th century saw major events taking place in the Star Trek universe. Following Shinzon's coup of the Romulan Star Empire, an open war kicked off between the United Federation of Planets and the Klingon Empire, as they once again attempted to settle for the 15th time the question of whose dad could beat up whose dad. Once again, Starfleet and the Federation were forced to take a close look at themselves and adapt to the new threats and changing environments brought about by the war. With the dissolution of the Kitimer Accords, <coughs> again, <coughs> in 2399, Federation and Starfleet officials knew that meeting the Empire in battle was only a matter of when, not if. As such, both the Federation and Starfleet were determined to be ready this time and ensure that victory was theirs because, you know, tradition. However, before the new Starfleet battlecruiser could be born, there was a predecessor that would lay the groundwork for the next ship. Just like NASA did the Mercury and Gemini projects before they went all the way to Apollo, we went through the Inquiry class battlecruiser before we made our way to the Avenger. Some Inquiry classes still served in Starfleet around 2409 to 2410, having been upgraded to what would be the next ship. Launched in 2409, the Avenger class was designed by the Starfleet Corps of Engineers to compete with the smaller, more agile vessels of the Klingon Empire, specifically the battlecruisers of the Klingon Defense Force. The emphasis was more on warfare than the typical mission of exploration that Starfleet would focus on. The USS Avenger would be the first ship launched, leading the charge and still in operation by 2410. With the launch of the USS Avenger and Starfleet's introduction of the class, it would spark a minor arms race between Starfleet and the KDF engineers. Not wanting to lose this battle to their rivals, the Klingon Empire introduced a similar MOG-class battlecruiser to their fleet. All of this a short while after the Avenger-class launched. Typically, the USS Avenger would find itself assigned to Earth's space dock as the class representative. However, during Operation Delta Rising, the Avenger, under the command of Captain Brandon Feltzer, came to the rescue of a shuttlecraft. The Avenger and her crew aided this shuttlecraft, which had fallen into a trap laid by enemies of the Delta Alliance in the Hodos star system. Presumably, they had trouble keeping the door closed against the hordes of screaming, oh wait, no, wrong franchise, sorry. Multiple Avenger-class starships were eventually commissioned and launched in response to the outbreak of the Federation Klingon War once again. As many as nine Avenger-class starships are known at this point. These starships include the Avenger itself, the USS Belipotent, the USS Justicar, and the USS Finda. Additionally, a subclass of the vessel was launched known as the Arbiter-class, but we'll talk about that another time. Following the 2410 Undine attack on the Sol system and Earth space dock, the Belipotent would find itself docked inside Earth space dock, along with the Avenger itself. Thus, the ships remain on standby to assist in the defense of Earth in times of dire need. I guess we're just going to hope that another whale probe doesn't show up. Additionally, the USS Justicar was positioned in Earth space dock in 2411, after the shattering of the Klingon Empire. The Avenger-class USS Finda was stationed at Deep Space Nine in 2409, while the International Conference on the Borg was happening, the USS Finder found itself defending Deep Space Nine and evacuation shuttles when the Prophet suddenly had a massive case of acid reflux and spat 2,800 Jemadar warships out of the wormhole. Thankfully, this ship was rescued by another starship, captained by a hero of the system, and thus escaped. As the Undine situation escalated, the USS Finder joined the expedition into fluidic space, which was led by Rear Admiral Tuvok. The plan was to investigate an upswing in Undine activity and see what was going on. 
By 2411, the Avenger class was in the process of being succeeded by a new subclass, the Arbiter, that we told you about before. It was designed in response to the incoming Iconian Empire battleships. The design for the Arbiter was based on the Avenger class, although all these designs for responses to the Arconian War are designed by the Alpha Quadrant Alliance. Only one known Arbiter class is known, and of course, that's the titular starship itself. Of course, the Avenger class is only featured in Star Trek Online, the MMO video game that is on PC and console, along with its predecessor, the Inquiry class, which is completely distinct and legally separate from the one that showed up in Picard. So shush. And while some Star Trek Online starships have made the transition to on-screen Trek via Picard, the Avenger remains in-game only right now. Hopefully in the future we might see more of this class out and about. Uh, wishful thinking, probably. So as we've mentioned previously, the ship only does appear in the Delta Rising mission because of a random event, basically. Additionally, the captain of the starship is an actual reference to the former community manager of Perfect World, the original publisher and developer of Star Trek Online. Brandon Feltzer, Felzer, Felelelelelzer, I don't know what his name is, recorded a cameo as the captain before leaving Perfect World in 2014. Thus, this marks the only appearance of the Avenger itself to date in Star Trek Online. With his departure, the chances of seeing Captain Alka Seltzer in game again anytime soon are rather slim. Designing the Starfleet Battlecruiser was a challenging task for the team at Star Trek Online. In order to start along the right path, they looked at using canonical designs such as the Akira class, the Defiant class, and the Sovereign class. Additionally, the team also looked at some missions from the 2011 fan contest, which you may remember, Design the Next Enterprise. Of course, that same contest brought us the USS Enterprise F, the Odyssey class, and the team did find a design by Corey Calloway that had a very unique feeling to it. Described as brutalist, it did not meet the requirements for being an Enterprise, but it did inspire the team to think about Starfleet battlecruisers. The design of the Avenger actually takes inspiration from the USS Prometheus, especially for the saucer section. This ship has been seen in Star Trek Voyager. STO's Adam Gibson, who modeled the Avenger, described it as a gunship, as well as being the one who actually called it a very big challenge to design, notably due to the fact that they changed from elegant sweeping lines and moved into a more angular combative style. The Avenger class was designed to look aggressive, but still have that traditional Starfleet feel to it. This was not an easy task at all. In fact, the team noted that it required a constant push and pull when designing the ship during the concept phase. Even though it was designed to be a battlecruiser, the fact that it was a Starfleet vessel still limited the team from going full-on blocky combat mode with it. We can see the comparisons between the Odyssey class and the Akira class with the Avengers design. The team has evidently made use of the Akira's protected bridge section and the Odyssey's split neck and saucer hull integration format. And as for its hull painting and paint scheme, the team went with the high contrast look that has really become the signature look of Star Trek Online Starfleet ships. The team did make sure that the weapon's hard points were noticeable, visible even, on the external hull. Additionally, making the windows of the starship inset to give them more of a protected and reinforced look. The neck of the starship was designed to be thicker, thus making the Avenger class look chunkier and ready for combat. And as mentioned earlier, the Avenger and its class only exist in the Star Trek Online storyline, which has significantly diverged from the main on-screen canon we are seeing through the likes of Picard right now. However, some ships such as the Ross class have made their way into Picard Season 2. The Avenger class can be flown in Star Trek Online as a Tier 5 battlecruiser. Currently, it's purchasable via the in-game Zen store for 2,500 credits. Its official name is Avenger Federation Battlecruiser. However, if you want to physically get your hands on an Avenger class starship, the Hero Collector series has released it as issue 11 of the Star Trek Online official starships collection. And just for a moment there, I thought it meant for real as well. I feel your pain. So what did you think of the Avenger class starship? Would you captain it in Star Trek Universe? Let us know what you think in the comments below, because if you're talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. But for now, I've been Lieutenant Adam. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper, my friends.